Most dentists have a deep and abiding faith in root canal treatment. Other dentists have long suspected that this confidence may not be fully justified. While most treatments end up leaving no pain, frequent patient complaints about persistent pain or discomfort do exist. Anecdotes abound about distant pains and systemic symptoms like fatigue, malaise, and even name diseases that clear up when root canal treated teeth are extracted. Dentists themselves may have the experience of extracting asymptomatic but unrestorable treated roots and find that they often smell terrible. Suspicion about the viability of root canal therapy goes back to the very beginning. The original studies that indicated negative systemic effects came from pioneering dental researcher Dr. Weston Price in the 1920s. Price documented experiments in which he extracted root-treated teeth from patients with medical illnesses and implanted fragments or extracts of the roots under the skin of rabbits. The rabbits proceeded to develop diseases that were similar to the humans, and most of them died quickly. The implication was that toxins produced by anaerobic bacteria remaining in the treated roots were leaching out and undermining the patient's health. Early indications of health recoveries created by extracting root-treated teeth in the 1920s and 1930s led to wide acceptance of a theory of focal infection. The theory stated that infection lodged in one part of the body, in particular the susceptible teeth, would metastasize to other organs like joints, the heart, lungs, or kidneys, and create disease there. Extracting the teeth would relieve the infection and therefore the medical illness. Eventually, medical and dental science realized that this was not a consistent or reliable solution to illness in the population and the whole edifice came apart after World War II and the introduction of effective antibiotic therapy. Today, the focal infection theory has been revived largely in regard to the oral systemic connection concerning periodontal disease, but little has been made of the possibility of an oral systemic leak based on persistent infection and inflammation from root canal treated teeth. It's a long established fact that when a root canal is infected, the dentinal tubules become populated by some of the invading species and they can persist for a long time, living by slow anaerobic metabolism. The theory in endodontic practice has been that such remnant populations don't matter because they are harmlessly trapped between the sealed canal and the impermeable layer of cementum on the outer surface of the root. Really, it's a simplistic and static view, considering the aggressive dynamics of microbial growth and the effects of time breaking down the seal in treated canals and the structure of the root itself. We all know what happens when you bury a living organism without actually killing it. Microbes and their metabolic waste products trapped in the dentinal tubules of a root will in the long run have access to the marrow space. The endodontic seal can eventually break down and the toxic waste molecules can even slowly diffuse through the cementum. Moreover, a tooth that starts with a periapical infection may have a microfilm on the apical surface that cannot be affected by endodontic treatment. Some biological dentists actually reject the whole concept of root canal therapy. They say there is no justification for leaving dead organs embedded in the body. 